Hello everybody, my name is David. Today is Saturday, the 23rd of February, 2019, and I hope you are having a wonderful weekend, wherever you may be. I'm a little under the weather today, I'm a little sick, so please bear with me if I seem a little off today. The topic I've chose for today is a topic I believe it's very important as a Christian, and I'm talking about church. I'm talking about specifically attending church. The Bible has a lot of scripture about attending church. I'm going to read a few scriptures about what the Bible says, and then I'm just going to talk to you about what I feel as a Christian, why I think personally church is a necessity to keep that Christian walk strong with the Lord. But first, let's go to the Word, and let's see what the Word has to say. Before I do that, I'd like to recommend to anybody, if you obviously should read your Bible daily, but if you're like me, and, and you like to study, or like to learn different things, or you do videos, or you give talks, or maybe you teach Sunday school, something along them lines, uh, a study Bible. I think this is probably, uh, it's absolutely my go-to Bible. I have a normal, regular Bible, uh, regular King James leather, leather-bound Bible. Uh, but this is an application study Bible. It's called Life. Um, it, it, it's fantastic. All my videos that I get the scripture out of, that I get points of view or help on things, they all come from my study Bible. So, I'm not trying to tell you to buy this study Bible. I'm not trying to hawk this particular Bible. I'm just saying, in general, study Bibles are the way to go. Very, very helpful. Anyways, let's get back to topic. Going to church. What does the Bible actually say about a Christian, a believer, attending church? Well, in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24 and 25, it goes as follows. And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another. And all the more as you see the day drawing near. Psalm 150, verse 1 to 6. Praise the Lord. Praise God in His his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his mighty deeds. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with trumpet sound. Praise him with lute and harp. Praise him with tambourine and dance. Praise him with strings and pipe. Praise him with sounding cymbals. Praise him with loud clashing symbols. Colossians 3.16, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And the last one, Matthew 18 verse 20, very popular scripture that I believe probably every one of you has heard one time or another, Matthew chapter 18, verse 20, for where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I among them. What does that say? That specifically means, that means when you gather in the name to worship the name, to worship God, to worship the Father, the Son, there he is there. Okay, that, that church is extremely important. Now, let me get into why I, as a Christian, a believer in Jesus Christ, one who has accepted Jesus Christ as my personal Savior, my thoughts on why I think you should attend church. Probably the most important thing that I can tell you today that church is so important, and that is to stay on track 
with the Lord. Stay with your stay in the walk with the Lord. You need strength, my, my brothers and sisters. You need food. You need food to eat. You need drink to survive. Daily we must eat, we must drink every day for our bodies to sustain. For so we can sustain, so we can go to work, do what we need to do. It's the same with going to church. Your spirit needs filled. Look at it this way. You drive your vehicle and then your vehicle runs out of gas, your vehicle will no longer go. It's the same with going to church. Your spirit needs refilled every week to get you to another week to get that word of the Lord into you, to have that sermon, to get the praise, the worship. That's like your gasoline. That is your fuel. For the week, my friends, that's what will get you from point A to point B, Monday through Saturday. You go to church on Sunday. If you have church in the midweek, go to church midweek. If you got Sunday school on Sunday morning before church, I recommend that as well. We have something similar to that. We have a gentleman come up before the service, and he gives a Bible study. Uh, it's it's really good. He's he's an older gentleman in his 80s, very knowledgeable of the Bible. And I love to hear what he has to say. It gives me the, it, it, it fulfills my spirit and gives me the sustaining word of the Lord to get me through my entire week. It is wonderful. So, going to church is extremely important because you need, as I just said, you need that refill. You need your tank refilled every week. I go to church on Sunday mornings, and a lot of times uh, I will stop at either a Walmart or somewhere because I have to pick up something before church, and I usually don't like to stop after church because then everybody's out and about, stores are much more packed, and I don't have a lot of patience. I don't usually like waiting in lines. If you know me, I'm not one who will stand in line for 20 minutes or so. I don't like to do that. None of us do. Let's just be honest. None of us do. So I usually try to go early to get what I have to get done. But I notice, especially in the summertime when the weather's nice, I will notice those stores are packed. People wearing t-shirts, tank tops, shorts, flip-flops. They're going to the ocean. They're going here, there, wherever. And I think to myself, man, nobody goes to church anymore on Sunday. I mean, it really crosses my mind to that point that Nobody goes to church anymore, it seems like. Of course, I realize people do go to church, but I'm talking in general here. People just do not go to church like they used to. This nation was built on God. This nation was built that Sunday morning. Every family got dressed, they got in their car, and they went to church on Sunday morning. It was only the heathens... As we said back in the day, the heathen neighbors or your heathen relatives that didn't go to church. They were the ones that neglected God. They were the ones that you would consistently try to witness to. But now there's so many, you just can't reach them all. Uh, it's why I do this video. I'm hoping to reach one person. If I, Like I said when I first did this, if I can get one person to give their life to Christ. All the hours that I've made these videos will be worth it a million, gazillion, quadrillion, ain't no such thing, but it'll be worth it over and over and over and over. If I can get one person to accept Christ, all of this is worth it. If I can just get you to think about the Lord at least one time in the day, especially if you're not saved, if I can have you think about Christ, then that little thought, that little chip that I put in your mind, that's that's wonderful. Then I, I'm doing my job. But church is so integral to your Christian walk. This nation was built on God. This nation used to attend church, as I said, no longer. Sundays now, instead of going and worshiping Jesus Christ like we used to, Sundays, especially from, say, late August until January are now people worship the NFL, okay? 
the National Football League, or what I like to call it, the National Felony League. That is what I call the NFL because the majority of the players are felons. Let's just be honest. So I call it the National Felony League. Point. Put that aside. I'm not here to crash on it. I'm just here to say people worship the NFL on Sundays now. They no longer worship the Lord. You have more people sitting in front of their TV sets at 1130 in the morning, 11 o'clock in the morning, start watching the pregame festivities that start uh, 11 or whatever, 11.30 in the morning, I'm not sure, and they start watching all their pregame hogwash about the National Felony League, and that is their church. Those guys that sit in their little suit jackets and their little ties with their little headphones and their little mics that come out in front, those are their ministers. Those is where they get their sermons every Sunday morning sitting in front of their televisions watching these broadcasters tell them about the upcoming games, telling them about the news, who's injured, who's not, what's going to, who's going to make the playoffs, who's got to, these people live for this. If half this nation put that much attention into church and, and Jesus Christ, we wouldn't even be in the condition, we, this nation would be so prosperous that it would be ridiculous. Now, we're doing much better economically because we got a man in, in the office, that's a praying man. I've never, ever admitted that President Trump is a born-again Christian because I don't believe he is. But I do believe he's a praying man. I do believe he is a praying president. I do believe he has read the Bible. I do believe and I do know he's had prayer sessions in the Oval Office. Now, I know the last president didn't want nothing to do with Jesus Christ. Wanted nothing to do with the name Jesus Christ. So, is the least we got somebody in there that's not afraid to say God bless to whatever it is. So that's wonderful. But if this nation put more time into church and God as they do the NFL on Sunday, we would be absolutely exploding, exploding. My friends, if you don't know the Lord, if your heart is burdened this day, I just want to ask that you would call out to the Lord because He will be there for you if you just ask God to come into your heart. Ask the Lord to deliver you. Ask the Lord to forgive you of all the sins you've committed. And you know what? He'll do it. As I've said every video, He will deliver you from those sins. The burdens that you're carrying right now, that load that you have on your back, all the sin, all of the stress, all the worries that this world puts on all of us. Now, I, I'm not excluding myself, but when you give your life to the Lord, He will lift that burden from your back. He will lift all of that from your back. Now, I never will say Christianity or being a Christian is perfect, that it's wonderful and rosy, because you still have problems. You still have worries, but the wonderful thing is this time you have somebody to turn to. And it's not another sinful man or woman. Because remember, men, meaning people in general, are inherently evil. We have the sinful nature, but Jesus doesn't. You can turn to perfection, to complete perfection, asking to forgive you of your sins. I beg you. You won't regret it. You won't regret it, my friend. You won't. God bless you. Have a wonderful rest of the weekend. Go to church tomorrow. I want you to get up, put your good clothes on, find a good church. Find a church that preaches the Bible. That's the most important thing. It doesn't need to be some big fancy church with gold fixtures and stained glass paintings. You don't need that. You need a church that stands on this, the rock, stands on Jesus Christ. You do that, my friend, I don't care if it's a church with ten seats. You're golden. You're good to go. Take care of yourselves. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.